this installment of Frank and Mary here in Southborough. For those of you who haven't watched the show before, my name's Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us. We do a whole bunch of different things. So everybody gets, I guess, to do what they like. I like doing elder law. Um, and this show is not about law, though. This show is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you see me do presentations at the Senior Center, you know that I always talk about my friends Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And, and their parents, Frank and Mary. And Frank and Mary's goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And, and if they live in Southboro, that means they want to live in Southboro. They don't want to live in their house in someplace else now. So, so the question is, who do Frank and Mary need to know and what programs do they know, need to know about so that they can stay right here? And uh, with me to figure that out was my good friend Doug Peck, who is a Southboro person, who I, of course, I don't know anybody. Doug <laughs> knows everybody. So he's really been the person who's, who's, who brings in the guests so we can have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And Doug, you've scored again. I have, yes. So you want to talk about who we got here? Yes. And, yes, we'll talk a little bit. We'll talk. This is Jeff Madden. Jeff is a case manager at Marlboro Hospital, and that's probably the most likely hospital people will go to, if, particularly in an emergency, coming from Southboro. Right. So. Uh, that's I, the default because sort of it's always hospital. the closest, closest hospital, hospital in and that's going to be the closest uh, hospital. We, I attend some meetings there. There's a lot of act, a lot of things going on there. A new cancer unit, a bunch of things. But we want to talk about his role as a case manager. As a case manager, because it's yeah. a very critical role, not just for the hospital, but for you to know about should you go into the hospital. Because Frank and Mary's going to get assigned a case manager if, he, if they go in. Right. There. So once again, I, I'm not. Doug always brings these great people that I don't know. So can you just tell us a little bit about how did, how did you end up as a case manager in Marlboro Hospital? Uh, it's sort of a long road to yeah. Marlboro Hospital. Uh, yeah. I started my nursing career at the Brigham doing yeah. oncology nursing. Um, and uh, that's sort of, it's a difficult, that's just challenging kind of uh, yeah. type of nursing. And I did that for about 15 years. Uh, then worked my way back through insurance companies. So I've worked, uh, as some patients would say, on the dark side with the insurer company. Uh, and then worked my way back to uh, acute medicine in the hospital as a case manager. Uh, and I've been now at Marlboro now for about three years. That's really interesting, though, because you also, you've seen it on the other side. And you yes, know sir. that everybody on the other side isn't necessarily from the dark side. They've got their, but they've got <laughs> your balancing interests. And so, yes. so in terms of making the case for this is a legitimate reason to keep this person in the hospital. In, indeed, you know most of the time right. when, whether it's the insurer looking at it, Medicare looking yeah. at it, or case managers for that fact look at cases, we're looking at leveling. What makes the patient need to be in the hospital right. uh, as either an inpatient or an observation patient? And that's very important to Medicare. Um, you know, they look at criteria, they look at for uh, severity of illness, how sick are you? Uh, and intensity of services. In other words, when we say that is, can the services be given somewhere else is the question mm -hmm. they pose. Somewhere so else meaning not in, not a, not in, in the in hospital. Not in the hospital, but not, not in the hospital Correct. So in the outpatient right. setting, at home, in a skilled nursing facility, those right. type of things. Right. So that's how they determine whether or not a patient needs to be in the hospital. Um, and, and, then, if, and from being on the insurance side, you really can appreciate how you, know, how you meet those criteria. Right? Oh, absolutely. And they look at them very rigidly uh, to fit those criteria. So does Medicare, right. right? So what we're doing now is working towards getting patients to really understand that. Um, and we do some of that education in the hospital, uh, but I think this particular uh, avenue is great for patients. It's gonna get to a broader audience. And, and one of the things we, that Doug and I have often talked about is the fact that, that, this, that, that audience, what we were just talking beforehand, I asked, I asked you that question, approximately, what percentage of the bed days there that it, are, are, are bed days where there's a person over 70 there? And your estimate was 75%. And those are the people who watch these shows. Those mm -hmm. are the folks, local folks, maybe at home, and they're like condemned to watch us, right? Because they're home and they're stuck at home. So, 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 so what yeah. does a, so two, two questions. What yeah. does a case manager do overall? And does everyone get one, so to speak? So <coughs> we certainly, are or do they have to pay extra to get you? No, there's no extra. No. There's no extra. <laughs> there is an extra. Yeah, no extra they money for a case somebody manager. somebody at 20 and then they get You know, we look at a patient uh, when they come to the hospital, and we look at 
certainly what brings them in there. That's part of our mm -hmm. job, what we call our utilization review or our leveling, which we just referenced. Yeah. Uh, we also look at what's the patient's home life at home. Mm -hmm. Do they have support at home? Do they have family? Do they have services already? Do they live by themselves? Mm -hmm. um, are they able to get to the grocery store? Are they able to do their shoppings, get to their doctor's appointments? So we look at them in terms of what their needs might be. Um, and we look at them from... Now, are you doing a, a medical piece of that? So that's a really interesting thing because it's a strange blend of medical and kind of social, what I'll call environmental pieces regarding who that person is really in right. the community. Well, case managers were a jack of all trades, right? So it, as it relates to that patient, we, mm -hmm. we help the patient understand as well why they're there. In other words, you know, when you say to a patient, well, you have a PE, we're going to do a VQ scan, and we'll see what happens, right? So <laughs> They'll say what? Right, they most say people <laughs> don't understand that, right? Yeah. So part I, of what I we, don't know what he just said. Yeah. Right? Part of what we do is we help the patients understand you know, their diagnosis, what brought them into the hospital, as well yeah. as what the possible treatments are yeah. and what their ongoing needs are going to be when they're ready for discharge, okay. right? And so we look at whether or not they're going to need rehab whether or not they're going to need services at home, whether through a visiting nurse or through, um, you know, perhaps some private pay, which we also have mm -hmm. listing of. So we go through that whole holistic approach to the patient. I like to use holistic because that's how you really have to address many of these problems. Right, right. But a big piece of what else we do is make sure that they understand their level. In other words, if you're an observation patient, that means something very different than an inpatient does to a Medicare patient. As an observation patient, we all have heard the three midnight rule, right? So as an observation you wanna patient... You want to mention so that. I, many yeah, yeah, have, yeah. Yeah. but only, only vaguely understand what that story right. is. So yeah. what Medicare, when they say the three midnight rule, Medicare means that you are in the hospital for three overnight midnights mm -hmm. at inpatient level of care. So you've been admitted to the hospital? Not necessarily admitted, but admitted as an inpatient. Patient. Okay. That's the distinction that a lot of people As opposed get, to observation? As opposed to observation. Okay. And they are very different, right? So, and it gets confusing because a patient in observation status, they say, well, I'm in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it certainly, fe for. certainly feels like I'm admitted. Correct. Right? So, for instance, a person who has chest pain, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go to the hospital. You're going to be admitted, mm -hmm. and they're going to evaluate you but you will be admitted as an observation patient because what Medicare feels is that what's going on with you will take less than 48 hours to manage. Oh, I see. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're an observation patient. As an observation patient, that means that you, let's say a physical therapist saw you and said, hey, look, they need rehab. As an observation patient, you won't be able to access your skilled nursing benefit. Period, end of story. Hmm. You can't go to a skilled nursing facility. You don't have the insurance for it. You can go, but you're going to be paying for it privately. Paying for it privately. Right. Um, we sometimes will circumvent that regulation by using an acute rehab facility. Hmm. Sometimes people who require that level of care, we can go to a place like a Fairlawn Rehab yeah. mm -hmm. or a Braintree Rehab. Or, or is, it Whitt Whitt is Whittier included? Whittier. In is sometimes included, but it gets even more convoluted, <laughs> right? So Whittier has, I didn't know, I didn't know. oh, it gets more and more convoluted. It's oh, crazy, this right? Yeah. This is brutal. Pat. So yeah. Whittier has what they call with Medicare, for okay. Medicare only, right? They're an yeah. acute rehab. They have a transitional care unit, so they do skilled nursing. Mm -hmm. And they have what they call LTAC, which you folks probably have never heard no. of. Never heard. LTAC is long-term acute chronic hospitalization. So it's for patients who are very, very sick, who mostly have been in an ICU, mm -hmm. who require a G-mean length of stay somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 days at the rehab facility, oh. right? <coughs> if you don't meet all those criteria points, you don't even qualify to go there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for Medicare, you have to qualify those con for those little qualifications right. to go there if you're a Medicare patient. And, and I suppose... Uh, th this, th so, yeah, so where, was, where this are my questions? Really <laughs> yeah. So you I, help we, sort we could, this we out. We go that way, yes. I don't want right? to. Yes. Yeah. So, right. so that's part of the reason why I have a job, okay. right? <laughs> so it's because... Because no, no he, real human being could no. actually figure any of this out. You right. need you, one of you special you don't. guys. You exactly right. right. You right. know, I could go on the floor right now and do a nurse's job. Mm -hmm. I'm a nurse. But you can't take a nurse off the floor and say, okay, do case management. Because it's just, the education is not there, right? 
Um, so that's part of why you need, another part of the reason why you need a case manager. And if you get admitted to the hospital, you want to find out who your case manager is. Okay. And going back to Doug's original mm -hmm. question, does everybody get one? Yes. We look By at- By virtue of being admitted, whether you're an observation or a- Inpatient. inpatient. Your, your inpatient. level of care doesn't matter. Okay. So you'll well, get good. a case manager mm -hmm. assigned to you when you come into the hospital. And if you're in, a group of say oh, 70 and older, you're going to meet the case manager mm -hmm. because you fall into uh, what we would euphemistically call a high risk category. In other words, you're likely to need something post discharge, mm -hmm. whether that's a vis simple visiting nurse or going oh, to a I see. Not facility. high risk in terms of what you're there for, but correct in terms of you your need, likelihood you need of an needing exit strategy. Something. Yeah, correct. That's more yeah. complicated than you're driving home. Correct. And yeah, most yeah, of yeah. the time, you'll see a case manager in the emergency room if you're being admitted. Mm -hmm. We start the discharge planning and we start that discharge process um, in many cases before you're even admitted, because we'll look at the patients in the emergency room and we'll say, oh, okay. It's a 95 year old who had a fall who now has back pain and yeah, probably gonna be admitted with that. So we'll meet those patients and we'll evaluate what their home situations are. And oftentimes we're pleasantly surprised that mm -hmm. you know they're, they're independent, they're still driving, they're still doing their own thing. But in yeah. some cases they're not um, and we need to get more involved uh, earlier Ooh. because it's sometimes getting a plan really early. takes a little bit of time. Right. Right? Now I think we think they need things in place when they go home. Correct. Right. Not, so yeah. you're, one more question. No, no, so you're I was involved gonna, yeah. in the discharge process. So you get a sheet of papers when you get discharged or one paper that says this is your medication, this yeah, is your so instructions. Gonna, yeah, what you're going to get, the nurses give you, we call it an AVS or an after visit summary. Right? Okay. So it'll be typically the doctors contribute to it, nursing contributes to it, physical therapy, the, the, the collaborative team approach. Okay. All contribute to that AVS. Our piece of it is, here is your discharge destination. In other words, where are you going? Okay. Who are you going with? How are you getting there? As I tell patients all the time, you know, I'm not the when person, because that's the most common question. So <laughs> when can I be discharged? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I tell You're patients, you know, I'm not the when guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm where and how, you know. Yeah. Important parts of that equation, but you know, the doctors and you and, and how mm -hmm. well you progress through the care, that's gonna determine the when of things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we'll help you with your family and you as the patient to determine the where and the how. Okay. And what people have to understand very importantly is that they are the boss of their health care. Uh -huh. right? I often uh, tell. I just gonna just because yeah. we want, yeah. we're close on time, and yeah. I want to go back to because yeah. this was Doug's question was yeah. you're the boss of your health care unless you can't make a health care decision. Correct. So can you can you can Correct. as Doug really wanted? I know we wanted we to, talk, to get to right. hear yeah. about that, how you deal with that. If someone's so, walking in and right. So we're so talking about a healthcare, healthcare proxy, proxy right? right? So what everybody mm -hmm. should have, whether you're eight or eighty, um, is a healthcare proxy, mm -hmm. right? Is that someone? And a lot of people say, well, I don't want to give up my control. I don't want to do this. Well, part of what the healthcare proxy does is it extends your control mm -hmm. in the event that you are unable to make decisions. So what you've done is you've made a determination that I want you know, uh, Peter or Paul mm -hmm. to be my healthcare proxy. Mm -hmm. I want them based on our conversations because there should be a conversation mm -hmm. around the healthcare proxy, not just signing the document date. You should be outlining what your wishes are in the mm -hmm. event that you needed certain you couldn't make emergency on your medical own. Right. treatment, right? right? Very important to do that sooner than later. Because mm -hmm. as we all know, we get older, sometimes we get forgetful, sometimes we you know, can't quite remember Peter or Paul's name, right? Mm -hmm. So if we get into that situation and you get into the hospital and you don't have a healthcare proxy, it becomes very difficult to manage your care because now in the hospital, in the acute setting, we can work with what we call next of kin, mm -hmm. right? So Peter or Paul can make decisions for Frank and Mary because they're the next of kin and it's an acute emergent situation. Mm -hmm. But now if, you know, they need rehab, mm -hmm. skilled nursing facilities or rehab facilities aren't able to accept patients without a healthcare proxy. Really? Because somebody has to sign Sign's, them in. Yeah. And if you've been deemed, the patient has been deemed mm -hmm. to lack capacity to make those decisions, mm -hmm can't go to skilled nursing rehab, and then you start to enter in the realm of 
guardianship mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. that cumbersome process that the state's put in the way. So if, if I show up at that hospital, mm -hmm. and I am a little confused, mm -hmm. right? Which means I probably didn't find my proxy on the way to the hospital, right? right? right. I don't have right. it with me. Right. Now, now what? What, what, do you, what do you do in terms of, in terms of trying to find the healthcare proxy? So a right? lot of times people do have healthcare proxies, but yeah. you know, as we all know, eh, it's in the firebox yeah. or it's in this place. In a safe yeah. place. Exactly, yeah, right? Place. So we, Except we, I don't know exactly, exactly where, that where that it is, is right? Yeah. So what we'd like is a copy of that healthcare proxy so that when you come to the hospital, you have that, we can scan it into our system. Right, so it becomes part of your permanent electronic medical record mm -hmm. that most hospitals are using now. Marlboro uses a system yep. called Epic, um, and then that can follow you, you know, mm -hmm. through your hospital stay. And then if you need to go to a rehab, we can print one out and send it to the. Actually, we don't have to print it out now. We yeah, can just, just electronically it. transfer it to mm -hmm. the facility of your choice, yes. and we can communicate that way so that your wishes are still known and that person who you've designated is now mm -hmm. able to sign you in and to help make decisions. So their doctor should have one too, right? Doctor should have one. Right. What I like right. to recommend to my patients is to make several copies. Mm -hmm. And a copy is just as valid as an original okay. in this particular instance. Your doctor should have one, your healthcare proxy should have one, and you should put a copy in your purse. Just to have it around. Just to have it with you. It's we, a pretty simple document overall. Absolutely. Right? I mean, it's like a one page. Yeah. It's or one page. You, one can, page yeah. you can print Timmy. it out yep. from yep. online. Okay. Um, right. Most doctors will have one. Mm -hmm. um, most hospitals have them. And well, anyone we, we, can do it. We should have him back to yeah, talk some should. more about this. Yeah. right? Because I think this is, this is, so many of your people, you, you know, are in this position. And so many of our people that we work with day and really need to be dealing yeah, with this Yeah, we stuff. definitely will. Because there's a lot we, more to go into. Th there's more yeah, to go. Uh, on what he does and what you should be thinking I, I about keep, when you go to the hospital. I keep waiting for Doug to bring a really boring guest, you know, <laughs> so that we don't like run out of time. But thank you very, very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Happy to be here. We, we, Jeff, we, I really appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. We really appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Great to meet you. Uh, we'll be back uh, right after the commercial that we don't have. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we'll be back. Thanks. Great. Thank you. So welcome back. Wasn't that a great commercial? Mm -hmm. So for the second half of our show, and it's actually going to be a little less than half because I, the, the moderator, let the first, did too long on the first one, right? Um, Doug's got another great guest, kind of related in a way, but so Doug. I think it's, I think it's very related. Uh, we have Rebecca Wild Wesley with us. Uh, she is a geriatric care manager, which is different than a case manager. Correct. So we're going to find out what the differences are and what, and what she does. Sure. So you're, uh, you're in, you have your own business, right? We're not, if you're not affiliated with a hospital to start that's off correct. with. correct. And I think okay. that's one of the main differences between um, care managers and case managers. Case tends oh. to be related to the institution or the insurance company. So mm -hmm. care managers really distinguish themselves by being really focused on the client or whoever. We don't call that that person a patient, but mm -hmm. in a hospital setting, you're a patient. Mm -hmm. uh, underneath uh, an insurance company, you might be, I don't know what they call it, an insurance company, <laughs> yeah. a member. You're just a number. Yeah, yeah. Right. Put it just away. a number, yeah. <laughs> we stand in for the person. Okay. So we tend to think about the fact that we're going to have a long relationship with that, <clears throat> that elder. Mm -hmm. Often it's an elder because we are generally working with geriatric population. We're going to be with them off until the end of their lives. Okay. Um, we'll be with them when they're in crisis, and we'll be with them when things are stable. And hopefully, again, it's okay. a long relationship. So and, and, and I just want to mention yeah. one thing. And the reason when I tell my clients mm -hmm. regularly, they say, well, what a, what's a geriatric care manager? I, and I'd say, that's your person. It's your advocate. It's, your it's a person totally right. working for you. That's right. It's kind of like what your lawyer is supposed to be. It's a person has no skin in the game. Exactly. No special interest, no right. conflict, no how much is the hospital being paid, no. Right. It's, it's what's best for you. It's what's best for you, and that's it. That's I just right. wanted to mention exactly. yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's good. Uh, my other question is, so what's your background? We just had a nurse in here sure. who was yeah. a case manager. Right. So over what? So I'm a registered nurse also, okay. and I have a master's in gerontology, which okay. is um, mm -hmm. another skill set that really allows us to have a lot more knowledge about all things aging. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm certified as a care manager, and I bet Jeff also has a certification. Okay. So uh, care managers are certified. Uh, we have initials after our name CCM or CMC, um, which uh, indicates that we have uh, passed a test and we have to keep up with continuing education credits, okay. oh, and good. we also 
Uh, many care managers are part of an association, mm -hmm. Aging Life Care. We're also known as Aging Life Care Professionals. And we have a high standard of ethics. And really, again, the client is the center of our care. Mm -hmm. So all of the work that we do for people has a high ethical standard. Um, we put the client in the center, and we make sure that we're doing things that are honorable on mm -hmm. their behalf. And now, are all geriatric care managers also nurses? No, um, actually, I would say more of them are social workers. Uh -huh. um, that tends to be the path that I see a lot of my peers coming out of nursing homes or often hospitals where they've been, they've been doing case management. Um, nurses, uh, I think, are a smaller subset mm -hmm. of the group. And there are other people doing care management who may have other backgrounds that are just slightly different. Mm -hmm. But if we're, uh, if, if we're doing care management, if we're certified, we have the knowledge base to be able to provide that kind of mm -hmm. care. Right. Um, in the, and it's in the home. This is where people are living, right. wherever they call home. So right. some of our people live in their homes. They live in assisted living because that's their home. They may live in a nursing home. And when they're in the hospital, we're in there and we're talking to case management because we want to make okay. sure there's a nice, smooth transition. <coughs> mm -hmm. We give that background when they come in. Mm -hmm. Jeff was saying we want to know what your home is like, who are your caregivers, who's getting involved with care. We're the ones who often can be providing that information, especially with those who can't speak for themselves. Okay. So what's a typical client like for you? Yeah. Do they have, or you know, what are you typically doing for that client as well? Sure. Is it somebody with some maybe mild cognitive impairment, or family members are not able to help, they live in different parts of the country, or just have really busy lives? And the healthcare system is so complex nowadays. It's not just a system. Right. It's it's definitely it, not it, a system. Right. It's, no, it's, it's just a chaos. A it's everything chaos. that goes on. When do yeah. I take yeah. my meds? Yeah. What, right. When right. do I need to go see the doctor again? Right. This is what the doctor told me, but what does this really mean? Right. Because you don't get to ask those questions That's of a right. doctor right. time and time again. So I would say yes to all of that. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I would say the majority of our clients are um, have dementia, okay. and they may have a diagnosis, they may not, and that might be the stem of what's going on, is that nobody understands that there's an illness okay. that's progressing and hasn't been diagnosed. And so often we spend time working with our clients and their families to achieve a diagnosis, mm -hmm. because we know the earlier we know what the diagnosis is, the better able we are to be able to work on things like the healthcare proxy that you talked about, the important documentation, mm -hmm. and we talk about fi finances because mm -hmm. now we need to. We now we know the illness we're dealing with, and we know um, likelihood of them needing to have a high level of care at some point in their life, and we need to make sure that everything is in order to be able to manage that. And, and I know um, once again for, for my clients, mm -hmm. I op I'll often say one of the things you expect from me, a geriatric care manager, is maybe you want you maybe you want care in the home maybe you want to go to an assisted living maybe there are other issues you need to face but you don't know who's who you right. don't know the yellow pages of all of this That's right. Right. so you expect that geriatric care manager to know all of that That's to know right. all the local organizations what might fit for you, mm -hmm. which is a very special thing, right. as and opposed I, to going to visit everybody. I agree, right? and I think that many families have been very good at doing research. Mm -hmm. I think where we come in is that we have a personal relationship with um, either the organizations where we might consider hiring somebody to help you stay at home but provide services, mm -hmm. or to be able to move to an assisted living if, if that's in the forecast. And also we'll help, again, if they're in the hospital, when they get the list of uh, 15 nursing homes they can go to for <laughs> right. skilled rehab yeah. that we can say well these are the ones I might aim for and we start to individualize that a little bit mm -hmm. for the best kind of outcomes and in all ways we want people to have the shortest amount of time in that acute setting mm -hmm. whether that's the hospital or the nursing home and we try to bring them back to their home so that they have a, um, a, you know some more control over their space mm -hmm. and we're not doing the care we're sitting often this we're planners we're uh, we help with those difficult conversations about um, that new diagnosis or um, where's the best place to move and should you be driving. So we help with that and then we oversee the care that will be occurring. Maybe Medicare will be paying for the visiting nurse to come in or for you to be in a nursing home setting, but we're there to give that extra oversight and to talk to family about what we're seeing and to read a medical record. Um, mm -hmm. Nurses and social workers are really good at navigating through that very, sometimes it's a physical thick file and mm -hmm. sometimes it is through an electronic medical right. record to be able to understand and translate if people don't understand what they have for diagnosis. Because it's all in Greek. It's all yeah, in yes. Latin. Right. You know, there are all that's these right. words that as, as a 
as a non-medical professional, you mm -hmm. would have no idea. Right. And, 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 and the other thing I think is really important is that once you've organized that care and the care's coming in, there's trouble. Right. There's a problem with a home care person. Mm -hmm. right. There's trouble at the assisted living. Right. Now there's there's somebody the senior can right. really right. count on, right? That's right. right. And I think we're trying to anticipate. That, you know? yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. Yes. So we, I think we <clears throat> often find ourselves um, developing plan A, plan B, plan C. Here's some options. Mm -hmm. And once we decide what we want, we're already looking at when something doesn't work. That's what What's I really the next like plan about that we care, need to have placed? Care managers That's a good point. Right. is yeah. to be able that you have a care plan. Right. But not all plans go well, as they should. Well, plans are modifiable. They, they modify. They so, not all plans so, work. So yes. it, but it averts crisis. When, right. you know, because now it's not going, going from one crisis to another. Right. You have a plan. If yeah. something comes up in the road, it's more of a speed bump right. than the right. car's we going, the wheels this. are going to come yes. completely. Now it's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's this happened. Is our plan. This is how we're going to deal yes. with it. Right. It's all been talked through, which is really just so right. critical at a certain stage. Do you have a you're not driven by sort of the age of the population so much as it, uh, by sort of, again, other factors as well right. as the age I or think, both? Um, I think mostly it tends to be that people, uh, because a majority of the people I think do have uh, an issue around memory, mm -hmm. judgment, um, insight to what their issues are. Right. So often it's a diagnosis that might drive okay. it, but it's really about the fact that something's no longer working yeah. in, their, in their life. And I think people are aging well for longer than mm -hmm. they used to, but I think at some point, even the most super ager, that 90-year-old who really mm -hmm. was, is, you know, that Jeff was speaking about, who comes in the hospital mm -hmm. and really can go back home, mm -hmm. at some point, usually, there is a degradation of your ability to be able to maintain your lifestyle. Right, because mm -hmm. yeah, while everybody, everybody dreams in terms of dealing with death or the mm -hmm. end of life, that God's going to allow somebody to just hit them in the back of the head and they're just going to mm, be dead. Yeah. As a reality today, mm. there is this space, and as you say, it's whether it's you're in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s, there's going to be some space between the time that you're great and the time that you're dead. Right. And the, and the question is, during that space, who, who can help you right. navigate the system and live as well as possible? Our, right. I love your saying space, because people will say, why did I name my, my business the aging space? Yeah. It is a space of time. And, yes. and, it's, and if you're good, and mm -hmm. there are people who don't just call us in crisis, mm -hmm. there are people who call and say, I, I'm alone, I have no one, mm -hmm. and I know I need to have a partner. So mm -hmm. they're they deliberately a, they using yeah. that time yeah. to be able to think about what's going to come next. Yeah. Um, and, and they have a plan. And then sometimes that person, people will call us, we'll, we'll develop a plan, and then that's it. They're good for a year. Then they might call again. Something new has happened. They have they have a resource. They've got someone who's mm -hmm. be able, you know, who, who's familiar with them and right. able to give them advice for the next level of care. Yeah. And it, it might not be care. It just right. might be choices. Right. Because the reality is, that you're going to something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the more you can think about that and prepare for it, and that's, right. that for where sort of a nursing background comes in, as you know, if it's a degenerative disease, right. There's, there's a future. There's stages. Right. There's That's a future right. to what's going right. to happen. Right. You don't know that's exactly, a, but that's you're, a good you've point. got yeah. a good sense of what's going to happen. You can right. prepare the person for it as well. Right. Because you have a relationship and, with and them. It, but it, that's a good point, Doug, because as, you, as you're saying, what you do know about life in the in during that in that space mm -hmm. is that it's changing. Mm -hmm. Is that it's changing. You're no longer in that kind of big long plateau that many of us live in for a lot of years, right. Right. and right. that's what life is. Right. You're suddenly in a time where, where life is changing, mm -hmm. and you want every day to be good, but, 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 but there's a, as a re you need a plan B, C, D, and e to right. keep changing as life is right. changing. Right. right. Yeah, so the whole family doesn't, yeah. become a ter it doesn't become a turmoil situation for everybody. Not everything is a crisis. Right. If it's managed That's right. well. You mean it's sometimes it becomes a crisis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff, only sometimes are the case. So I think care managers have the mixed blessing of being able to see the future. Yeah. And that's based upon years of experience. Right. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you understand what is coming up. And I think we never, uh, the families still know their family member the best. Mm -hmm. So what we're all doing is we're all trying to get together with our visionary ability to see the future and their knowledge of how mom deals with crises. You know, you're working together to be able mm -hmm. to make the best plan for that person. And the plan for each person is different for the next. It's because yeah. we are different. So there yeah. is no cookie cutter way to handle what's going to happen when you get a certain diagnosis. Same diagnosis for two people, different play we're gonna, mm -hmm. way we're going to play that out in their okay. lives. 
Doug, it is just so great that you brought this person on because I oh, think yeah. to, to, to get folks a sense of how important this role is Absolutely. during this, what can be, it can be a week, but it can be years of your life mm -hmm. and to have somebody that you can trust just yeah, crucial. And avoid a crisis situation. And avoid a crisis. Absolutely. And know what's going to happen to go to the hospital yes. as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. Good. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much you for very coming. Much. Thanks. This is this just is this is always a terrific. good conversation. <laughs> so <laughs> I it. hope you've enjoyed this. I think some of these themes and these people are mm -hmm. going to be coming back because yes. these are really important topics. In the meantime, we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mayor here in Southfield. Thank you.